There have been many instances in literature and movies of stories about people hunting others for sport. It began in 1924 with the short story The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell, and is seen more recently in the media in things like the Japanese book and movie series Battle Royale, as well as the ever-popular Hunger Games franchise. But it's never really happened, right? Wrong. In 1970s Alaska, today's subject abducted women, only to release them in the wilderness to be hunted down, sometimes for days at a time. This is a brief history of Robert Hansen, the Baker Butcher. As always, this episode of A Brief History contains graphic content and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. In today's video, we are recreating the Anchorage home of Robert Hansen, based off of exterior photos of the home. Robert Hansen was born on February 15, 1939 to Christian and Edna Hansen in Esterville, Iowa. Hansen had a challenging childhood and his father, a baker, was said to be an authoritarian and had an unpleasant relationship with his son, who was made to work long hours at the family bakery. Outside of the home, Hansen was frequently bullied at school, especially due to his stutter and constant acne, which left him with permanent scars on his face. Hansen was ignored or jeered at by what he called the attractive girls in school, perhaps leading to his hatred for women and need for what he considered to be revenge against their taunts. Despite his issues, Hansen was well-practiced and enjoyed hunting and archery, using his skills and talents as an escape from his not-so-picture-perfect life. In 1957, Hansen enlisted in the United States Army Reserves, but served only one year before being discharged. He moved on and started working at a police academy in Pocahontas, Iowa, as an assistant drill instructor. While working for the police academy, Hansen met his first wife and they married around 1960. Hansen's first marriage was short-lived, with his wife divorcing him after he burned down a school bus garage. Hansen was arrested and charged and ended up serving three years in Anamosa State Penitentiary, Robert's first but not last interaction with the prison system. During his time in prison, Hansen was diagnosed with manic depression, now known as bipolar, and also with periodic schizophrenic episodes. The psychiatrist also noted Hansen's obsession with revenge for people he had felt wronged him. Despite these warnings, Hansen was released after only 20 months in prison and married a second time in 1963. After marrying his second wife, the pair moved to Anchorage, Alaska, where Hansen opened his own bakery and the couple eventually had two children. Hansen flourished in Alaska, where it is said he was extremely well-respected and well-known in the community both for his bakery and for setting a number of local hunting records. It would be his reputation with the community that would eventually allow him to get away with so many of his crimes for so long. How could such a wonderful member of the community commit such atrocities? In the winter of 1971, Hansen's crimes would escalate quickly, with Robert being arrested twice, the first time for abducting and attempting to rape a housewife, and the second time for raping a sex worker. Hansen pled no contest and was sentenced to five years in prison, only serving six months until being placed in a work release program. It's thought that Robert Hansen graduated to killing women sometime in 1972. Hansen would find sex workers in the area, abduct them via airplane, and fly them to the remote wilderness of Alaska to a small cabin he owned, where he would have them stripped down and run, only for Hansen to stalk and hunt them like animals, killing them in the woods, usually either with a hunting knife or a big game rifle. Hansen easily murdered women like this for years, until 1983 when he decided it would be easier to simply lure the victims to his home before abducting them. In the summer of 1983, Robert Hansen sent his wife and children off on a European summer holiday staying behind to supposedly run the bakery and care for their home. In truth, he just wanted them gone. On June 13, 1983, Hansen picked up a 17-year-old sex worker named Cindy Paulson, whom he had offered $200 for oral sex. 
Cindy entered his vehicle and was quickly surprised when Hansen pulled a gun on her and drove her to his home. While at his house, Cindy Paulson was raped and tortured while chained to a post in the basement of Hansen's house. Hansen eventually put Paulson back into his car to move her to the airplane hangar, intending on bringing her out into the wilderness, like so many other women before her. But while Hansen was getting the plane ready for takeoff, Cindy managed to escape and ran towards a nearby traveled road. Cindy was found running down 6th Avenue, barefoot and handcuffed by a passing motorist. Paulson recounted her story to the authorities, adding on that she had left her shoes with her abductor as evidence for the police. After hearing her tale, it was undeniable that Robert Hansen fit the bill. Cindy had described his plane, his face, and his well-known stutter. But police were reluctant to bring him in despite his run-ins with the law. Hansen was, again, well-liked in the community. Hansen claimed that he had picked up Cindy, but refused to pay her extortionate demands for sex and provided an alibi with a friend that was cleared. Robert Hansen was released. Around the same time Cindy Paulson was found, the FBI was hot on the trail of what they believed to be a serial killer. Women had started being reported as missing, sex workers and exotic dancers, and bodies were being discovered in the wilderness outside of Anchorage. Authorities contacted the FBI for help with a criminal psychological profile. Special Agent John Douglas profiled the three found victims and believed that the killer would have low self-esteem, have a history of being rejected by women, be an experienced hunter, and feel compelled to keep souvenirs of his victims. But even more on the nose, Special Agent Douglas concluded that the man they were looking for would likely have a stutter. Between the accusations from Cindy Paulson and the on-the-nose criminal profile provided by the FBI, it was undeniable that Hansen was a prime suspect. The Anchorage PD got a warrant to search Hansen's plane, car, and home, and were shocked to find jewelry belonging to some of the missing women, as well as an aeronautical chart with 37 little X marks on it, hidden behind a headboard. Many of the X's were found to be sites where bodies had already been located, and further investigation led to more bodies at the appropriately marked spots. Robert Hansen tried denying the allegations for as long as he could, but evidence proved otherwise. Once given definitive proof that the police knew what he had done, Hansen confessed to murdering 17 women and raping another 30 over the span of the decade. After his arrest, ballistics tests found matches between the bullets used on four of the victims in Hansen's gun collection, and he entered a plea bargain. Hansen would plead guilty to the four murders there were evidence for, and would provide details about the remaining victims, while being allowed to serve his sentence in a federal prison with no publicity in the press. Hansen helped authorities locate some remaining bodies on the map he had hidden in the headboard, but five of the bodies to this day have yet to be found. Hansen also added that there had been a few women that he abducted that he released to freedom after they convincingly told him they would not go to police. Robert Hansen was eventually sentenced to 461 years plus life in prison without the possibility of parole. Hansen served his time in prison until August 24th, 2014, where he died of natural causes. The story of what people would come to know as the Baker Butcher has been retold and referenced in pop culture and media many times, from a movie based on the specific crime called The Frozen Ground, to off-handed mentions in Criminal Minds. And Hansen was not the only person in history to hunt humans, with the practice being especially popular during the Spanish Civil War, when wealthy landowners would target landless peasants. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments on this case down below. Thank you for joining me for this episode of A Brief History. Thank you to my patrons who support this series. You are so appreciated. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more true crime Sims content. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.